Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent leader and guest for you. But before I go ahead, make sure you subscribe and share this amazing content with your communities in healthcare. And also let me acknowledge our partners, the content partner for this month, Fujifilm Healthcare, and our global partner, Spirit Digital. But without further ado, let me introduce you to Michael Dillon. He's a health tech junkie. And that must be the most uh, nice, quirky title uh, ever. Michael, how are you? Hey, good to see you, Joao. It's been a while, man. It's been a long time. Michael, nice to see you. Are you keeping well? Uh, you know, uh, it's a little better now than if... Uh, we would have spoken uh, a year ago, but I think that like goes for everybody. It's just, it's like, ah, right. Human beings, fantastic, wonderful. Uh, you know, nice to have the, the video conferencing, but um, I'm happy we're, we're gonna get a chance to, you know, see people together in person. Sure, and for people like us that travel a lot around the world, we got stuck in indoors and i know that you start traveling again i'm also start to move around again and we were talking before the recording that we met back in 2015 six, 2016 in paris which it seems like a long time ago right yeah 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 Joao. it's it's like another life uh particularly in this like uh industry right or you know you but then again sometimes old is new and new is old so maybe you know it's hard to say. Michael, brilliant. Nice to see you. I'm going to crack on with the questions. Is that okay with you? Yeah, go, man. So the first question that I have for you is, how do you see the progression and adoption of wearables in healthcare? So that's a great question, Joao. I'll tell you something. I see the progression of wearables, from my perspective, hasn't come too far in terms of the technology. We still have some of the basic physiological uh, parameters that we're measuring. I mean, I, I was uh, uh, talking to a VC last week, corporate VC. Uh, he was asking me to look at this company and the company's um, focused on in the air. I don't want to give away too much, but the social determinants of health. And uh, he says, it's a very interesting company. Lots of uh, experts form the company in this area, mental health. And they're measuring steps. Ooh, ah, actigraphy. Ah, yes, great. Mm, good deal. Okay. Um, that's like the very, still some kind of gold standard for it. So the progression is mm, maybe not technically all that exciting, um, but I see things on the horizon that really excite me. Now you say adoption, I think about adoption and I think, Oh, well, hang on. Now we've really come a long ways. Now, you know, my mother knows what a wearable is. Uh, you know, clinicians who were, let's say, a little skeptical about things like the Apple Watch are now uh, not only excited about how they can use them in their practice, but excited about how they get to use them outside the practice, you know? So that's... I think come a long way since you and I were thinking about this in 2016. Michael, absolutely. I do agree with you. We came a long way. The, more, the wearables are starting to be like mainstream. I was actually like talking to a health insurer, a near based in UK before our interview. And yeah, we came a long way. The, the, the market is evolving very rapidly. Thank you for that. The second yeah. question that I have for you is, I have heard you saying, forget software, IoT will eat healthcare and life sciences. What do you mean exactly? Yeah, thanks. So what I mean is everyone is so, it's so sexy to have uh, some, the, the software component. We were talking before 
the recording about a little bit about this. But everybody's uh, very excited about software companies. And I get it, right? I mean, nice thing about software companies is very high margins and, um, and it, not so difficult to put together. The problem that we had is we weren't really measuring everything. And we weren't measuring it. And without measuring everything, you know, all this wonderful software and even more so all the, the, the data analytics and artificial intelligence that everybody has to have and everything, their, their, their washing machine, uh, you know, their nail clippers, everything's got AI. It's all driven by the data collection piece. And now we have, I mean, okay, so some of this is a little self-serving. I'm the chairman of the Strategic Advisory Board for Elemental Machines. Um, Sridhar Iyengar is the founder. He, uh, a wearables guy, right, um, came up with this idea that let's put, let's put IoT devices, not so sexy, little boxes, but let's put them in, in regular places and let's measure not just the environment, but let's measure the all of these machines and tools that we have using in the space in r d diagnostics and cro's all of this and i see more and more of this idea coming through when people think about the future of we'll call it laboratory or research operations it's going to eat everything because the time is now when you will see this data collection piece won't will no longer be the big bottleneck, right? You know, I, I saw somebody earlier today post, uh, oh, some software company I won't say their artificial intelligence consists of a PowerPoint, um, and it, to be fair, it's because the data is so difficult to get at, right? You know, so. I think IoT will be uh, the thing that makes this dream of data silos go away. Not analytics, not the workflow, not the software, but the, the, the boring, let's say, data collection piece. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Michael. Absolutely agree with you. That, I mean, that intelligence, without data, we don't have the meaningful insights and and there's also a struggle to get data and making sense of the data. Very good points there. And the third and last question that I have for you is, why is claims data, and we're talking about data, and wearables the perfect health tech marriage? Yeah, it, it is. It really is. And the, the, the piece that's interesting about it is twofold. One, at least in the United States, you're seeing insurers and everybody really, because it involves everybody, talk about value-based reimbursement. And value-based reimbursement, of course, is, uh, you know, we want to see a, uh, a certain quality of care assigned to a payment. Very hard uh, to change a system that's been based on fee-for-service. If you can't quantify what that value is. And here comes our favorite subject wearables into the mix. And so now you've got two, really what we need, two truths. One is the claims data itself. So when the, you know, people <clears throat> maybe don't say exactly what's going on when you have patient reported outcomes, integrations with EHR databases continue to be a little bit of a challenge despite all this interoperation business being talked about. But claims data, everyone wants to get paid. So the claims data is the truth. And here comes the wearables and the wearables, another a passive sensor that's giving you another truth about the physiology of the patient. You know, we, we live in, in this world where suddenly it was all about how are we going to measure clinical intervention, but really we've now, because of COVID and uh, gone uh, almost in mass to how will we measure things outside of the clinic? How will we, how will we really know the truth? And claims data, it is what it is, it, it is, a, is a truth and wearables together will give us the truth and it'll, it'll help quantify the value-based uh, 
component of the reimbursement uh, headache for providers. Um, and it will, I think, drive the, what I said in my earlier when we talked, the technology behind wearables, because now there's, there's, some, there's some reason we need more biomarkers. There's some reason I, we, we need to understand more about what's going on with the physiology of, of patients, you know? And, and it's, I tell people all the time, I said, look, your car tells you so much about what it's doing every day. But we still live in a world where we have very little real-time longitudinal data coming from the most important machine in the world, and that's us humans. Oh, brilliant, Michael. What can I say? Nice, nice way to round up. Very My important. Pleasure, man. Yeah, <laughs> great, great to talk to you. It's nice, it's nice to see you. I mean, very important points there about the value-based, the healthcare, the wearables, bringing the data and them. We can use that for new business models, which is a challenge anyway, as you know, because they need to be figured out and everything. But thank you so much for that. Brilliant intelligence, brilliant expertise and insights there. And Michael, I finish all my episodes in a peculiar way. It's not really a question as such. It's called one minute of fame. So you can mention anything, any companies that you are involved. We're talking about that inverter that you that you launched in 2015, 2016, wearables company. You can give a shout out to anybody. You can mention your personal life, family life, anything Ooh. whatsoever, anything. To round up, over to you, one minute of fame. Well, only one minute. You know, I lived 15 years in Switzerland, but I'm still American. It's hard to watch it. <laughs> so uh, first thing I would like to say is uh, thank you to my family for putting up with me. Um, uh, that's uh, a shout out to my entire family. Very wonderful family. Uh, it's not easy uh, living with an entrepreneur. Then to all of my friends, both health tech and non-health tech, what a great support group. I was just in Dublin with Health Excel and Marty Kelly and, you know, Roberto Asioni and all these guys that are just spending a lot of time thinking about this um, to help put together the community. And then, of course, I, I did a shout out for Elemental Machines. It's an amazing company and it's one to keep an eye on. Um, I also uh, am very interested in, uh, in obviously wearables myself, and we've got a little project going on measuring a novel way to measure fluid variation. So big, big problem in oncology, cardiology, renal diseases, gerontology. You know, we, we live in this world and you still can't quite figure out what's going on in terms of the fluid outside your cells. And uh, that's a great way to end this. It's fantastic. That's, that's the best one. I, this is the best format for sure ever uh, of all the, the podcasts I've done so far. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Look, Michael, I want to thank you again personally. Ni nice to see you. I mean, you're doing great things. Let me congratulate you on your work, but also thank you for taking the time. I know you are busy to be here, sharing your expertise, some insights and some great information and uh, and everything N nice to see you i'm gonna round up now you're the man thank you thank awesome. you Michael. and thank you for our viewers and listeners make sure you subscribe also i'm gonna post the links here to connect with uh, michael on linkedin and on twitter make sure you reach out to him he knows a lot about health tech and he's always involved in very exciting things and to finish you off let me acknowledge again our global uh, partners and sponsors, the content partner Fujifilm Healthcare and the global partner Spirit Digital and I'll see you next week.